welcome. My name is Amy Dashno, and I'm an occupational therapist within the Infancy and Early Childhood Program at Surrey Place. And I'm here today to talk to you about motor development in infancy. On our agenda, we are going to first talk about what is an occupational therapist, or OT for short. What is an OT's role when working with infants and their families? What are motor milestones? What are the things that you can expect to see in your child from the time that they are born till approximately two years of age? And how can you as a parent or a caregiver support your child's overall motor development? So what is an occupational therapist? An occupational therapist is really someone who helps people across the lifespan. So meaning from the time that they're born until death, develop skills that they might need, maintain skills that they had, or restore skills that are needed to engage in everyday meaningful activities. And these activities are known as occupations, and they can really be divided into three separate categories. The first category is self-care, and that, just like this picture, can include things such as feeding, so self-feeding by using fingers, a spoon or a fork, um, dressing, so being able to take off clothing and put clothing on, as well as toileting, and for this age group, that would be toilet training. The second is productivity, and this looks a bit different across the age span. So when we're younger, this tends to be a lot of play skills or play-based activities. As you get older, this can include going to school, and again, it can include your work. So things that you need to do throughout the day to be productive. And the third is leisure, and that really describes anything that we like to do for fun. So it might be going for a bike ride, it might be swimming, playing with friends, anything that the child does throughout the day that brings them joy. In terms of working with families, OTs have quite a few different roles, so I'm going to go through those. The one thing that we really do is we help to monitor your child's development. So we like to make sure that they're reaching milestones that we're going to talk about today over a certain course of time. So we help families with that. We really focus on developing gross motor skills. So that tends to be learning how to roll, learning how to sit independently, crawling, pulling to stand, and eventually walking. We helped families and their children develop fine motor skills and play skills. So that might be helping your child reach out for something that they want and grasping items. In and out play, which really refers to putting items into containers and then taking them out. And then we look at pre-printing skills or school readiness skills as the child ages. So we also help with developing self-help skills and that can include utensil use, so being able to use a spoon and a fork independently, as well as toilet training. We support a child's sensory needs, so seeing how they respond to various input from their environment. That might be touch, smell, taste, and auditory, so it might be how they respond to certain things that they hear in their environment. We speak to other professionals who are involved in the child's care to really get a good understanding of who they are and what their needs are. As well, when we start to work on goals with families, we like to connect with the other professionals, so we're really all on the same page. And we like to make referrals as needed to community agencies. So if we're working with a child and we notice that they might have difficulty with chewing or swallowing, we might make a referral to a feeding clinic. This also includes things like orthotic clinics to help with walking and physiotherapy. Okay, so for the purpose of today's discussion, we're really going to focus on motor milestones in children from birth to two years of age. 
what are motor milestones? And these really describe what movements you should expect to see from your child at certain stages of their development. And motor milestones are broken up into two separate categories. So you have gross motor development, which really involves the larger muscles in the body and how they work together for movements such as rolling, sitting, crawling, and eventually standing and walking. And then there's fine motor skill development. And this really involves the smaller muscles in the hands working together for things like grasping objects such as toys, being able to hold a bottle and cup independently, being able to use utensils and or crayons, as well as a variety of other things, but really mainly it focuses on the small muscles in the hands. Things that you want to keep in mind. So when we're talking about motor milestones, just remember that this is a guide. Okay, so it really helps us knowing and what things that we need to be looking for in our child's development and as they grow. Every child does develop at a different pace. So there is a range of time for when we expect to see certain skills. So it's really important not to be comparing your child to other children. Okay, you really want to have a good understanding and focus on the progression of their development over a range of time. So knowing that sequence of development is very important so that you know what skills you can focus on next when helping your child develop their motor development. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is gross motor skill development between zero and six months of age. Now, as you can see in this picture, rolling is going to be one of the first things that you see. So during this time period, your baby is going to learn to roll from its back to its front and front to back. Okay. Then as they start to develop some strength, your baby is going to learn how to sit. And initially, sitting, as you can see in the first picture here, is supported. So there's something that you can use like pillows or cushions to help prop your child up and give them that support that they need before they're eventually able to sit more independently once they've developed some more trunk control or muscles in their stomach. Okay, and they have head control in this case as well. You can see with this little infant um, being able to sit up on his own. From zero to six months of age in terms of fine motor skill development, you're really going to see babies start to move their arms together. So moving both arms at the same time to try and swat at or grasp something. And then they start to move their arms apart. So using their right and then their left separately. And because their hands are going in front of their eyes, say when they're swatting objects in a mobile, like as in this picture here, they're going to start to recognize their hands. Again, between this age, um, you're going to see your child start reaching and grasping for objects. So that might be something that's out in front of them, like the middle picture here. So if they're on their tummy and they have a preferred toy that they like playing with and they're motivated by, they might want to reach out and try and grasp that object. Or here is in this little boy is sitting and he sees something that he wants that he can play with. He's going to reach out and try and get that toy. Okay, the next thing we're going to focus on is gross motor skills that you expect to see again within the window of six to 12 months. You're going to see your baby start to crawl. Okay, so they're becoming more independent. They're developing strength in their arms, in their shoulders, in their legs. You're going to see them transition. And really what this means is that your baby is going to be able to move in and out of a seated position. So this might be that they're sitting and they're moving into a crawling position or they're crawling and they move back into a seated position. You're going to see your child start to pull to stand. So if they're by a piece of furniture, 
they may hold on to that piece of furniture to provide them with some stability so they feel a bit more safe and they might pull up on that furniture into a standing position. Okay, and they're going to start cruising along furniture. Again, this is all as they start to develop those strength in their legs and their balance. They're going to cruise along the furniture using the furniture for support and they're going to take two or three steps along that furniture. So you can see in the second photo here, the uh, family has put different toys on the couch for the child. So if some are placed at one end and some are placed at the other, you might see your child cruise along the couch to get the items that they want. In terms of fine motor development between this age, babies are going to start to be able to move toys from one hand to the other, and they'll start to bang toys together. So holding an object in each hand and banging, for example, blocks together. Children are going to be releasing toys into large containers. So this is what I talked about at the beginning around in and out play. So at first, it's accidental. So they don't mean to drop an object into a large container, but then they learn, oh, this is, this is kind of cool. So they put the objects in and then they take them back out again. And as their skills develop, those containers can get smaller and they are still able to put those objects in. They will also start to pick small items up using their thumb and their index finger. And this is what we call a pincer grasp. And you're going to see it mostly during feeding time initially. So if your child is seated in their high chair and you have small pieces of food out on the tray for them, they will start grasping at those items. It's motivating for them. They're hungry and they want to eat. And that's a good time for them to develop that skill. And then we get to 12 to 18 months of age. So this is a time when your child starts moving. So they are going to learn how to walk independently with your support initially and then eventually on their own again as their strength and balance develop. And you might see at this time that they attempt to run. Children at this age can typically squat or reach down as in this first picture to pick up items that are on the floor while keeping their balance. So this child's able to move into a squatted position without falling, pick up the item that he wants and stands back up. As well, they can pull a toy when walking, again, while maintaining their balance. In terms of their fine motor skills between 12 to 18 months, you should see that your child's able to stack a two block tower. So as in this first picture here, the blocks are larger, which are easier for them to stack. So you should see them being able to do that. And they might start using their index finger. So this might be to point out things that are of interest to them, or it could be during play if you're using, say, a touch and feel book and they're touching the different textures on each page, they might be using their index finger to do that. As well, actually, as pushing buttons on toys. So that's a really good activity to promote that skill. Um, they're going to start to scribble with a crayon, so it's really good time to be able to give them blank pieces of paper so that they can just start coloring and they're going to start to use a spoon to feed themselves independently. This might be messy and that is okay because they are just learning. So it's really a time when they have that opportunity to practice self-feeding. And then finally, in terms of gross motor development between 18 months and two years of age, your child's going to be able to start going up and down stairs with some support, and that support being holding onto a railing or holding onto a parent's hand or both. So your child might, as their skills develop, only need to hold onto the railing with one hand and hold onto your hand with the other. And you might see them starting to jump with their feet, being able to clear the floor. They can start to use ride-on toys, so where they sit, <clears throat> and then they push with their feet, as well as learning to kick a stationary ball. So what this just means is that the ball is not moving. So you could simply place a ball in front of your child and they should be able to kick it. 
In terms of their fine motor, again, their skills now are more refined. They can stack rings, so they can use their eye and hand coordination quite well. They can take that ring and place it on the stacker. And they can turn knobs, so it's a good time to probably have those safety features in place at home. They will start to string large beads. Again, great for using two hands together. And their coloring and drawing skills will be a bit more advanced. So they might be able to imitate the drawing of a vertical line, which basically means if you draw a vertical line, they are able to then watch you and then do the same thing themselves. And again, at this age, they should be able to throw a small ball as well as insert most shapes into a shape sorter. When you're using a toy such as a shape sorter, um, it's best to start off with those simple shapes. So starting off with something like the circle would be best for your child until they understand that concept of this is supposed to go in here. And then you could advance more onto the other shapes that might be a little bit trickier for them. So what can you do as a parent and a caregiver to support your child's motor development? And this is just a visual that I want to go through because there are some times throughout the day definitely when these are needed, um, but it is really hard for your child to learn motor development and learn what we call movement patterns when they're strapped in. So whether that be in a bouncy chair, a car seat, um, a exercisor or being held onto your body. When they're in these pieces of equipment, basically, they're not able to move freely on their own and they're not able to develop the skills that they need. So again, although sometimes they are essential to have, there are things that you might need to do throughout the day and you can't always be with your child, but it's important to be mindful of how often we're placing our children into these types of equipment and to actually remember that they need more movement throughout the day. So have them in these less and out on the floor more. So in terms of some gross motor strategies and things that you can do, floor time is a big one. So this is where you're going to place your baby on the floor in a safe area with close supervision and it's really one of the best ways that you can support gross motor development and free movement. So in this first picture here, this is just a foam mat. So you want your child obviously off of a hardwood floor and onto something more comfortable for them. So if you're close by and you have something like this, it's great to have that down. If you're in the same room but you can't be right there, you might want something that has a little bit more security, and that would be the second picture here. Tummy time. It kind of goes hand in hand with floor time, but I'm sure a lot of you would heard about tummy time and, and hear that it's really important, and it is. So what tummy time is, is giving your baby opportunities to play on their tummy at different times throughout the day. This really helps to build head and neck control, strengthen back and core muscles, as well as build shoulder and arm strength and encourage movement. So tummy time is actually not um, a time that some children really like, but it's something that you have to get them used to and have to practice with them consistently on a regular basis, really because it is so important for developing those skills. So maybe you could work up to several times, say three times a day, ideally 30 minutes at a time. But if your child doesn't tolerate that, don't start there. Start at maybe five minutes if they tolerate that. You really have to kind of see where your child is at. And initially, tummy time might look like just having your baby resting on your chest so that their tummy is on your chest. And as they develop comfort with that, you can have them then on the floor. In these two pictures, the first two pictures, the children have a cushion that goes underneath their arms. And that's really nice to help prop them up and bring their head up as well. The mats that they're on also have some visual interest. So it really also encourages them pushing up on their arm and being able to see what's in front of them. 
Same thing with this third picture. So using mirrors is quite motivating for children. So this little guy, you can just tell, he is pushed up on his arm. He is developing muscle and strength in his shoulder and back and neck. Okay, really good things to encourage your children to be doing. And the other is teaching the movement. So this is why it's really important to understand those stages or the sequence of motor development so that you can help your child by teaching them the movement, get to that next stage in development. So you can see that this gentleman here, he's helping the child learn how to roll. So he's what we call facilitating that movement, right? So that over time, if you continue to do this with your child, you're teaching your baby what movements are required so that eventually they're going to be able to do this independently. This is this one is really important and I find it's what we help a lot of parents with when children are younger. Okay now we'll talk about fine motor strategies and what things you can do at home to support the development of these skills. The first being positioning. Positioning is essential when we're looking at developing fine motor skills with kids. And what that really means is that we want to make sure that their bodies are well supported. They do not have to focus on trying to sit upright and they can really just focus on using their hands and developing those skills. So some of the things that we like to use to help a child feel supported and be supported are bumbo chairs. So this one is the first picture. So they would be seated and strapped in for that support. And then this is the tray that you can get added to it. So you can place some activities out on the tray for your child to play with, knowing then that they really do not have to work on trying to sit upright, as well as a high chair. So again, this is really great when you're feeding your child but you can have play items out on their tray as well. It's a time when they're well supported. And again, they can just focus on using their hands. And the last picture here is a booster seat with the same idea. So just making sure that your baby is sitting upright and that they are not having to work on keeping themselves in that position. The next strategy is sensory play. So giving your baby the opportunity for sensory play to really encourage fine motor development. As you can see in these pictures, that might include mealtime. So you might put things out on the tray. In general, it could actually be the foods that they're eating during meal or snack time that they might wanna play with or get their hands messy, or it can be outside of that as well. Um, the second picture here is playing in the sand. Again, a different texture and feeling on their hands for them to get used to. And it could also be different textures with toys. So you can see in this third picture that all of the toys have a different touch and feel to them that a baby can play with and just get that exposure that they need for sensory development. And keeping little hands busy. So really expose your baby to toys and activities that encourage the use of their hands and fingers. So again, that's objects that they can um, put items into, take items out of, pushing different buttons and turning knobs. So it's just a lot of exposure, both for fine and gross motor development, giving your child the opportunity to move and play with various toys and items. So sometimes when we talk about these, these activities with families, it seems like a lot of uh, things that parents need to incorporate on top of their schedule, but that's not the case. You can really incorporate a lot of these activities already into your existing routine. And that's what we try to tell families to do. It's doable when you do it this way. So one being diaper changes. So if you're at a stage in your child's development where they're not yet bringing their feet to their hands, this might be something that you want to do during a diaper change. This is also a great time because ideally they're on a flat surface um, that you want to work on rolling or that tummy time. So you're incorporating it into an activity that you would already be doing anyway. Meal time is fabulous. So placing a scoop again of their foods onto their tray and just letting them explore that different texture 
encouraging self-feeding when it's appropriate to do so. So providing them with the opportunity to develop their fine motor skills to pick up smaller foods, so developing that pincer grass like we talked about earlier, and eventually being able to use a spoon on their own. You can also, because the child, like we were saying, is well supported in a high chair or booster seat or bumbo, whichever it is that you are using, it's a good time to be able to offer them just toys that they can play with, maybe while you prep dinner or after dinner. So you can put these toys on the tray, such as blocks or stacking cups, or it might be a time if your child's at the stage of development where they're interested in coloring, providing them with um, crayons and paper to do so, as well as playtime. So just general playtime. So like I was saying, you know, make sure that they're out of that equipment as much as possible and having them on the floor and being able to move and just encouraging lots of exposure and being mindful of that. In terms of takeaway messages from today's discussion is really just to provide your baby with lots of opportunities to move. So that is key. Okay, we've gone through that several times that that is so important for your child's motor development, both gross and fine motor. Understand that development does occur over time. That's why I talked about things in ranges. So it's not that something needs to develop at a set age, it's that it can happen over a course of time. That's why it's important to have a good understanding of the sequence of development and how you can encourage your child meeting those next steps. Do your best not to compare your child to other children the same age. And again, it's just because there's that range of time when skills develop and children develop at their own pace. Again, understand that progression or sequence of development. Incorporate activities, so fine motor and gross motor activities, into your already existing schedule. So it doesn't have to be so much things on top of what you're already doing. You just want to incorporate them into things that are already a part of your routine. And as always, if you feel that you're doing all of these things and your child still is having difficulty moving through that sequence of development, absolutely reach out to your healthcare provider, whether that be anybody that's working with your family or your pediatrician, but do not hesitate to do that if you really feel that there are some concerns. I did include some handouts here. Um, that you uh, will have access to that again go through some of those strategies and techniques that we talked about more specifically through motor development and again how to incorporate those activities into your already existing schedule so you will have access to those following today's presentation. I want to thank you today for joining this presentation Motor Development in Infants and we hope that you found it helpful. If you enjoyed this event and would like to view some of our other recorded events, please visit us at surreyplace.ca slash wellness. As always, we welcome your feedback. Please take a moment to tell us what you thought of this recorded event by visiting the link on your screen. We hope to on your screen. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you.